Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel and a new review and discussion video. And my very first one about one of my absolute favorite, absolute favorite game franchises, Total War. Now, I am currently, as you can see, the videos playing right now are for Total War Rome Remastered. The thumbnail says Rome 2, the description says Rome 2, and why are you currently on Rome Remastered? Well, Total War Rome Remastered kind of kicked off a few things for me uh, in how I'm thinking about this time period in gaming. I was a huge fan of the original Rome Total War. I actually still have the CD lying around here somewhere. And it's a game that I will always treasure and love. Now, of course, when I saw that Total War Rome Remastered was coming out, I immediately pre-ordered it. No, none of these games I'm talking about I got for free. I paid for it all from my own earned money. And I started playing Rome Remastered. I'm honestly really enjoying Rome Remastered and understand its AI and pathfinding shortcomings. In fact, when I started seeing it, I kind of laughed and went, ah, there you are. Now I remember this game. Rome Remastered is a fun, casual play for me that brings back the nostalgia feels from when I played this back in college. But I understand what it is. What it, and what it isn't, and what it doesn't do, it doesn't scratch the itch of deep immersion and historical gameplay. Total War Rome 2 does. So, why this? Why did I decide to go down this route? Why am I talking about Rome Remastered first? Well, Rome Remastered came out, I played it. I hadn't touched Rome 2 in quite a while. At the same time, I was playing a lot of Imperator Rome from Paradox. Well, Imperator Rome, of course, got uh, <clears throat> paused for now uh, <laughs> in its development. And so I started to look for a more deep and immersive gameplay in this kind of classical antiquity Roman period. And, well, Rome Remastered is fun. I'm enjoying it. I'm not getting as worked up as some people are. But I still, it's not really what I'm looking for. But Total War Rome 2 is. And let me explain exactly why. So, Total War Rome 2's engine in 2021 is still amazing. And can honestly compete with the best Total War games out there. Which, <clears throat> is Attila, by the way, but beats most games since 2013 for historical accuracy, since we can argue if there have really been many historical titles with there, coupled with great optimization, which is, of course, the area where Attila desperately falls short. Since Attila, the only historical title, truly historical title, was probably Thrones of Britannia. Everything post Thrones of Britannia, or even pre, if we throw in Warhammer, is obviously not historical. Troy isn't historical. Three Kingdoms isn't historical. They have slightly historical settings, but they are not historical Total War games. Now, we all know Rome 2 had a rough launch, but has since evolved into a truly great game, especially since the 2018 update. That's right, this is a game that launched in 2013 and still had an update in 2018 which updated many areas, including graphics and AI. But, and you will see this right now looking at the screen, to get the best Rome 2 experience, there is only one, quote, right way to play it, and that is with the DaVita at Impera mod. Now, Vanilla Rome 2 is a great game. It's a lot of fun. I messed around with it, and then I started with DaVita at Impera, or DEI, and it just takes it to a totally new level that I think you'll enjoy a lot also in 2021. So DEI is a simple mod to install as you can access it as a three-part install from the Steam Workshop. But you do have to install it and make sure it's loaded in your mod manager for Rome 2 in the right order, otherwise things get a little bit screwy. DEI is actually constantly being updated and improved with the latest update having been released in late March of this year. I think it was March 25th is when the 
1.2.7 hotfix came out. 1.2.7 came out in late February. So what makes Rome 2, Divita et Impera, such a great game? Well, it combines the best of Total War and Paradox Grand Strategy into one package. And I'll get into the different features here in a moment. It's got detailed campaign mechanics, if I can speak, improved AI, and more historical, historically accurate immersion. Rome Remastered is a historical. It's fun. It plays in a historical setting, but overall, it's not historical. I mean, the, the names are off in a lot of places. I mean, Iberia is called Spain. That wasn't really a thing yet. The Gauls and Germanic tribes are just Gaul and Germania instead of individual tribes. Of course, the way Rome is split up is not historical. So it's just, and don't even get me started on the, the pajama, the pajama Persians. So it's just, it's ahistorical, but it's fun. This scratches that historical itch that if you like Imperator and you like Total War, this will give you everything you need. It's a lot more challenging when compared to the vanilla game, but with the improved campaign man mechanics, it adds so much for both Total War players and the grand strategy players from Paradox. It combines both worlds so very well. So what are the different things here about Davida and Impera? that make me say that. Well, first of all, we're gonna talk about a large number of historically accurate factions with reworked unit rosters. So if we go here and we go to campaigns, now you got your prologue, your grand campaign, and then you have all of these expansions, uh, all the DLCs, which I have for Rome 2, which they also include in Davida and Impera, but honestly, the best one is the grand campaign. And you have, as you can see, it even goes beyond the box, so many different factions to choose from. If you pick Rome, you've got the Nobiles, the, uh, the Patrici, and the Equites that you can start with. Uh, then here, which is basically Carthage, they also have the more accurate names, but Carthage, you've got the Hanonid Dynasty, the Maganid Dynasty, and the Barchid Dynasty. Then you can go with Maria, where you have three different factions you can play. The Diadochi, where you've got uh, a few different factions you can play. Uh, we've got Antigonids, Seleucids, Bactria, Epirus, and uh, Ptolemy, which of course are the Egyptians. Uh, then in Gaul, you have a number to pick from here. In fact, five different ones. You got the Boi in here, the Nervi, Koinon, and then the Arverni, which is one of my personal favorites. Then uh, down in Britain, you have the Iceni, the Caledoni, and uh, the Irish, essentially. In Iberia, not Spain, you've got a few different ones you can choose from there. Then uh, you've got some Cock. Caucasus ones, you got Scythia as one you can pick as, you know, I mean, some of the names you may not recognize and some of them I don't either. Then you've got the polis. So basically the Greek world, you've got Sparta, Rhodos, Pergamon, as well as Athens, uh, some uh, Arab areas you can pick from. Then you've got Thracian ones you can pick from as well as the Getians. As you can see, you got North Africa here, Massalia faction, you can pick a few different ones. This one, the Bosporus, always a favorite one of mine. Syracuse is another one. Then you can go down the Persian route where you have Pontus, uh, Hike, then you have Parthia, which is always fun. And of course the Germanic tribes, you've got three different ones. You can pick from Suebos, Kimbros, and Leogos. So as you can see, there are just so many different factions you could pick from. If you compare it to Rome Remastered, which it's a lot less, this gives you a huge number that you can choose. And if you come from, say, Imperator to Rome, where you have even more choices, this is kind of a good in-between if you're looking for something that will continuously get updated, unlike Imperator to Rome right now, this, this could be it. So what are some of the features that make Total War Rome 2 Divida et Impera so good, in my opinion, and absolutely worth playing in 2021? 
Well, some of the things that they add, now of course I talked about new units, new factions, things like that, are main, main points for me are reforms, population system, supply system, an area of recruitment, resources, character traits and skills, seasons, and diplomacy. So that's a lot of stuff to get into. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about reform. So reform is a very typical system here that everybody goes through, both the AI and the players. So reforms add new units that can be recruited. They are triggered by turn number and the Imperium level that you achieve for a player's uh, only turn number for the AI. So it does add a little bit of a challenge. So that's a, an interesting, unique thing that kind of follows historical precedents as to when certain innovations and military reforms happened in real life. Now, a big one for me is the population system. If you can add a pop mechanic, well, you're already already a winner in my eyes. So as we get into the population system, it does add four different population classes to the game. You can kind of see it here on the right-hand side. You've got four different pop classes that are represented within your region, within your faction, within your territory that you hold. Now, certain unit types will require certain amount of specific classes to recruit. You can go in here, M uh, Amazea region population. You can see where the population is breaking down between Eugenies, Katoikoi, Laoi, and Xenoi, and are they growing or are they dropping, and where is your total population in that regard? Another key aspect is here, you now also need to grow your culture in newly conquered regions so you're able to even recruit locally, and you can do that through different buildings. So with the population mechanic, you need to carefully manage your growth, culture, public order, and everything that influences those factions. I did an, a really fun little campaign with the Bosporan Kingdom, and there are a lot of quote-unquote foreigners in the region, because obviously they are predominantly Hellenic. They conquered an area that is not predominantly Hellenic, so I spent a lot of time in promoting Hellenic culture and working on public order before even starting a war. So yeah, it's a little more micro intensive than some people may like but i really enjoyed it because it immersed me in the area and it was completely historically accurate the next aspect that dei adds is a supply system so you can see here you can see how many available supplies there are the supply production and total supply change it forces armies to rely on regional supplies where they are as well as supply lines that you can build up over time be that through specific units or specific buildings. A well-supplied army is always more successful. The other feature I want to talk about that they have are called areas of recruitment or AOR. It adds regional cultural importance by only allowing certain units to be recruited in certain regions. So if you want specific, um, I don't know, a Cretan... Uh, archers, for example, you have to conquer Crete. You have to control Crete. Otherwise, you don't have access to that unit. I don't know if that's actually a real unit in here, but just as an example, something that's very specific to a region, you need to own that region to be able to recruit from that area. The other thing that they have are resources. So each region has a specific resource that it produces via the main city building line. These produced resources then lead to special buildings that can be produced there or made there so you can actually expand on your production. Some resources can be spread through certain buildings across your holdings. Now here we see the character screen. The other thing that DEI adds are character traits and skills. Here you can see each character has six different traits that can change over time due to various circumstances. For example, political rank, personality changes, etc. If we look at uh, uh, Mithridates here, his traits are he's a uh, Vasilevs. So that gives you certain bonuses. Then he is an architect. 
He is histrionic, so indulgent, vain, brash, and wasteful. He is erudite. He's a deputy, and he's a scrapper. On top of that, with skills, he right now has impartiality. So you can actually develop the skill tree of your character to add more skills over time as they progress. I really like this because it adds greater immersion, makes you care about your characters, whether they're ones that you control directly or members of your court. Um, and it adds a huge amount of role play possibility to your campaign, which you know I'm a big fan of. Another cool feature that DEI adds is the importance of seasons. So there are four turns per year, each representing a season. Right now you can see we are in the winter of 278 BC. Each season has a percentage chance of an extreme, bad, normal, or good version that can occur with a variety of associated effects. Now those that are in the far south and far north on the map will have more likely out of extreme summers or extreme winter effects. Some in the middle don't necessarily have that. There's always a 10% chance of everything being non-normal and then a very large percentage chance each season that you just have a normal season. But I have seen playing as the Bosporan Kingdom where you are in the north region of the Black Sea here we're right up here that I've had some harsh winters and that's represented, you know, it's snowing on the map and everything and you're dealing with a lot of issues that are associated with that. Another thing that the Davida at Impera mod adds is the importance of diplomacy. Now it hasn't changed diplomacy existing, but what it has done is made the ag it very aggressive. The AI is very aggressive, which makes it important right away from turn one to engage in diplomacy. And you should always expect the AI to betray you when it suits them. They look for weakness because of the aggressive way that diplomacy is handled in DEI. Whereas in vanilla, you know, diplomacy is there, but I've never really felt a lot of urgency. Whereas with DEI, I kind of tested around and just ignored it. And that was really, really bad because I was isolated really quickly and got trounced by my neighbors. So as always, keep an eye on diplomacy. I think a game that adds diplomacy is extremely important. You have a lot of different options here. You can even create a satrapy, which is kind of nice. But diplomacy is very, very important in Total War Rome 2 with Davida et Impera. So the other thing I need to add here is that this game is meant to be played on normal set settings. It's what it's balanced for. So everything on normal in Davida and Impera helps. It, it balances it out properly because honestly, this mod makes Rome 2 more challenging. And it absolutely speaks to my paradoxian wants with the population system and everything that's included. So if you're looking for an amazing, immersive, and historically somewhat accurate game set in the Roman classical antiquities time period, then Total War Rome 2 with the Divita et Impera mod is something you should seriously consider. If you have the base game, just download the mod from Steam, or you can even go to their website directly. I will put a link in the description where you can also go through all the different guides on all the different features. I would suggest adding any missing DLCs you might have because that just adds to more factions and more units that you can play. If you don't own it yet, you can buy it through my Nexus GG store link in the description or just wait for the next Steam sale, to be honest. So that is my relatively quick overview and review of why I think Total War Rome 2, especially with Divita and Impera mod, is absolutely a must play in 2021 if you are looking to play a fun, immersive, historically accurate game set in this general, let's call it, Roman time period. So if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing that as well so you don't miss out on any future Total War content. I am planning on doing much, much more in the future. And as always, your views and comments are much appreciated. If you have played Rome 2 vanilla and not Davida and Impera, or you have played it with Davida and Impera, please share. 
your thoughts on this awesome game down in the comments below. So until next time, I'm Round Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.